So, candy floss grapes. Wait a minute, didn't we already do this in a previous video? Well, yes we did, but today I'm going to try to make raisins out of these candy floss grapes. So yeah, we enjoyed a box of these candy floss grapes about a month ago, and I just went back to the supermarket yesterday and bought another box because I'm curious to know what happens if you try to make raisins out of these. Does that kind of sweetness and special aroma persist through the drying process? So today I'll be making some raisins out of these grapes, but also as a control, I've got some black grapes here, seedless black grapes that, at least I think they're seedless. It doesn't say so. So yeah, just took a couple of those and tried them. They are indeed seedless black grapes. Weird that it doesn't say so on the pack. It would normally say so. Anyway, so I'm gonna put these all in the dehydrator. We're also gonna to try to address the question today, is it even worth doing this at home? Is it worth buying grapes and making raisins if you have a dehydrator? We'll look at cost, we'll look at quality, we'll look at kind of environmental impact as well, I think. So let's get started. The first thing we need to do actually with these grapes is check them. So I need to take them all off the stalks and blanch them in boiling water because that will crack the skins and remove the wax off of them. They will dehydrate better. Right, so after removing all the stalks, we've got 813 grams of candy floss grapes. And the red grapes, I'm only gonna do 250 grams, or 252 grams of red grapes. I'll check these first, just so there's no cross-contamination of the candy floss flavor into these. So these are gonna be the ones that get blanched first, and then we'll blanch the others in the same water. Okay, the water's come to a nice steady boil. In go the first batch of grapes. I won't put too many in at a time because obviously adding the grapes does lower the temperature. So two minutes blanching and then those can come out. It's interesting how much of the colour has actually washed out of the skins. That's amazing. It's all in the water now. Oh, I just steamed up the camera lens. Okay, I think that's all of them now. Okay, that's back on the boil. I'm going to put in about half of the green grapes now. It does seem a bit weird that I'm putting green grapes into purple water. And I don't know if that's going to make a difference, so we'll do half of them. And we'll see what happens. Okay, so the first batch of green grapes. It doesn't look like they've taken up any of the purple colouring from the other batch. As you can see, they've gone a bit paler. They're more yellow than green now. But it doesn't look like they've taken up any of the purple blue colouring from the control batch of grapes that I cooked in the same water first. So that's good. Okay, and then... That last batch we'll just strain and then we're done. So if we just have a look at what's happened to these grapes, on some of them, or on many of them, the skin has kind of split and cracked and that's gonna help the moisture to come out. So I'm gonna arrange my red grapes, or black grapes they were, on this side here to keep them separate from the green grapes on the other side. I've got plenty of space in the dehydrator this time because we're, we're not really loading it up. So I'll just put green grapes over this side. Now it's possible that as these shrink, down into the raisins, they will fall through the holes in the dehydrator because the mesh is not exactly fine. However, in the bottom here, I have got a fine mesh. So if they fall through, the bottom layer will catch them. Right, there it is then, 55 degrees Celsius for 10 hours. And we'll come back and check that at the end of that 10 hour period. I am going to do a financial and energy cost analysis of making these raisins and compare that to the price of buying raisins in the shops and we'll also talk about the idea of shipping grapes and turning them to raisins here versus turning them into raisins locally where they're grown and then shipping them as raisins. Okay, 10 hours of dehydration and this is what they look like. They're kind of like big, squashy, slightly moist raisins, which is... Not quite as good as I expected. I really hoped that they would dry a bit more than that in 10 hours. So they are gonna need another run through. They look like they get in there. There is a concentration of sugar on the bottom, you can see. So I'm gonna run that for another cycle. That's more energy going into this, but we're gonna calculate that all at the end. The black grapes have actually done a bit better, but they're still 
yeah they're still a bit too squashy really a few of them are almost raisins but I'm going to run them for another cycle as well I might take these out halfway through because they are a bit further along than the green ones okay these have now had 15 hours of drying in this dehydrator and I'm stopping now because it's kind of diminishing returns at this point I have a feeling the green raisins would get a bit smaller and drier than this and probably darker as well but we're at the shallow part of the exponential curve now so I'm just gonna stop here and decide that these are soft raisins the black grapes have dried into something that really does resemble the kind of raisins at least in consistency that I might buy in the shops. Colour is very interesting. I don't think I've ever actually seen raisins that colour before and they are quite pretty. I'll get the rest of those in a minute, there's a few left down there. Now important to note that we have lost some weight here. Some of the juice and sugars have come out of the grapes and stuck to the bars here so we got sort of residue here so we've lost some volume and weight that way hopefully not too much that will have also happened with these green ones but of course it's harder to see because it's clear or not so dark in color these are really sticky so the all-important way in the black grapes have yielded 45 grams of raisins the green grapes these are the candy floss grapes have yielded 183 grams, 184 grams of raisins. Okay, I think we need to do a taste test now. Okay, I've invited Jenny to join me in the taste test and for once this is not a horrible taste test, hopefully. So hopefully this will be something that's a bit pleasant. So I've got the raisins made from black grapes, the raisins made from the green candy floss grapes, and I've got some sultanas here from the store cupboard as well. So these are raisins or sultanas that we've bought at the shops. So where do you want to start, Jenny? Let's have a go at these then. So they look quite different. They're sort of more purpley red than anything you'd buy as a raisin in the shops. Quite sweet. Mm -hmm. I would say they've not really got a lot of that kind of raisin flavour really. They're just like a, like a dried fruit flavour, aren't they? No, raisins have got that kind of brown sugar flavour to them, haven't they? Right. These have got a bit of acidity. Acidity to them, haven't they? Almost like those... Um, nice actually. Almost like those cranberries, dried cranberries, mm. but not quite as acidic as that. See, if we just taste one of these, these are the shop-bought sultanas. They've got that kind of caramelised um, yeah, brown, sh they're brown they're sugar flavour. I don't know, actually. I don't know if they've got added sugar when they're made or not. I don't, I've no idea. But, they, but they're, they're kind sweet. of... They've got that kind of thing that you get from dates, haven't they? Mm. The kind of brown sugar flavour. Okay, should we try one of these now? Now, these are quite a lot more squashy than your standard raisin. Softer inside, mm. but not juicy at all, are they? They are sh sort of sugary and syrupy inside. Mm. Okay, can you taste the candy floss flavor at all? I'm gonna take a few to, to test this. I'm gonna take four. I would say mm. there's something there. Mm. Tiny little bit. They haven't got the um, tanginess as like those. Yeah, no, they haven't got the acidity of those, have they? No. But they don't have, I, I would have said that, that kind of candy floss, caramel, butterscotchy sort of sweetness. I mean, I, I, mm, it's a little bit there. Try again. I think it's still there. Mm. I would say it's fainter though. Mm. Favourite of shop bought versus black grapes versus green candy floss grapes. Quite like these. Mm -hmm. Yeah, these have got a pleasant acidity to them. Mm. So if you were going to put these on your cornflakes or on your bran flakes or breakfast or whatever. They'd be quite nice. Those. Mm. Yeah? Yeah, so they're almost like cranberries, aren't they? Mm-hmm. But not quite as sharp. Mm. These, I reckon, in an apple pie. Because you could throw them in an apple yeah, pie yeah. and you'd have apple and raisin pie, but you wouldn't have the dark colour that you get from raisins. Yeah. So it'd stay green. Yeah, we could try that. Yeah, we might do that tomorrow, actually. Okay. Well, thank you for joining me for the tasting. So if we just have a look inside of all of these raisins, so I'll do one of the regular shop-bought ones first. It's not very much to see, but the inside is kind of slightly crystalline, and you do actually get sugar crystals in there. With the black grapes, kind of similar, but a little bit more juicy, maybe a little bit more syrupy. And the green ones, much more sticky. And on the inside, 
more like a sort of gooey, sticky jelly. What I always forget to do with these tastings is taste them both together. So let's try that. Mm, nice, but I think it diminishes the distinctiveness of the two different kinds. Okay, now it's time for the breakdown of cost and impact and so on. I'm going to use the yield stats on the black grapes. So assuming we get 18% yield of raisins from our grapes, for one kilo of grapes you'd get 180 grams of raisins. So working that backwards you'd need over five and a half kilos of grapes to make one kilo of raisins. The cheapest grapes I could find were one pound and six pence per 500 gram pack, and the cheapest raisins I could find actually were sultanas, same difference, were 99 pence per 500 gram pack. So using those yield stats above, we would need over 11 packs of those grapes, which would cost £11.78, versus two packs of those sultanas, which would cost £1.98. So the kind of raw, rough and ready price difference here is £9.80 more expensive to make the cheapest raisins rather than buy the cheapest raisins. That's nearly six times the price. But we haven't looked at energy cost yet, so assuming five and a half kilos of grapes will fit into one load in my dehydrator, there's a small amount of energy used to boil the water to check the grapes, but boiling water over gas is really cheap. It's actually only about four pence to boil that saucepan of water for about 20 minutes. The power consumption of the dehydrator ranges between 200 to 240 watts. Depending on the temperature set, the temperature range is 35 to 70 Celsius. And so assuming that's linear across there, the dehydrator draws 217 and a half watts at 55 Celsius. So 217 and a half watts for 15 hours is 3,262 and a half watt hours which is 3.26 kilowatt hours. Cost of electricity per kilowatt hour is about 15 pence. So the extended cost of the electricity used to run that dehydrator is two pounds 25 or thereabouts. So when we add those costs in for one kilo of finished raisins, the cheapest homemade raisins are 14 pounds and seven pence per kilo. The cheapest raisins I can buy are still one pound 98 per kilo. So that's a price difference of 12 pounds and nine pence or a price factor of more than seven. And of course we haven't even looked at the environmental impact because obviously shipping five kilos of grapes, which are mostly water, and then driving the water off of them here, that's gonna be more expensive than shipping one kilo of raisins. I'm not gonna try and do a detailed breakdown of this because I haven't got access to realistic shipping costs. But what we can say is there's probably gonna be a factor of 5.56 at least because they are 5.56 times heavier. There's also packaging materials. If you look at the packaging materials for that punnet of grapes, there's probably more plastic in there than there is in that 500 gram bag of raisins. So packaging materials might be a factor of six or so. And also the energy impact then comes back again because obviously I've got no way to know for sure about this, but dehydration at source in a warm country such as Spain where my grapes came from might well be done using natural sunlight rather than electricity or gas. So conclusion, this is obviously neither cost effective nor environmentally friendly. I'm not going to be doing this again. This was an interesting experiment, but I certainly won't be repeating this. I will probably reserve use of this dehydrator for things that I can procure locally, like wild mushrooms, and that I don't have other easy ways of preserving. So there's only one bit left now, which is to make that apple and raisin crumble, including some of those green raisins. Okay, well the crumble is ready now. In fact, it's had a little while to cool down. So I'm just going to dish it up a bit of this. I think Jenny's just finishing watering the garden. So there it is, and we can see those raisins have plumped up a little bit in the fruit layer there, which is going to be nice. These haven't rehydrated just like if you'd soak them in water. They've absorbed apple juice. So I think that's going to make them even nicer. And I think I'm going to have this with a scoop of raspberry ice cream. Well, actually, it's raspberry Swedish glacé, which is one of these dairy-free things that we bought for somebody who's got a dairy intolerance. OK, I'm going to taste a bit of everything first without the ice cream. So make sure I've got a raisin or two in there. Here we go. Mm. They're quite subtle. Obviously they weren't completely dried and they weren't dried down to sort of caramelized level. They're nice. But yeah, quite subtle and that's good because it balances well with the apple. I think if I didn't know those were green raisins, I'd have trouble figuring out what they were. Yeah, it's the same texture as apricots. Or... Yeah, but yeah, I think that's a success in there. Mm. I mean, obviously we won't probably do that again because those were really expensive to make. Yeah. What I haven't done here is compare these raisins with the most expensive raisins you can buy. What I've actually done is compare them with the cheapest raisins you can buy and they're definitely not cost effective that way. 
I probably ought to have a look and I'll do that now and put that on the screen. I think they're still going to be more expensive than even the most expensive raisins you can get from like Waitrose or M&S or something. But I will put that comparison on the screen now. Yeah, I mean they're nicer than the cheapest raisins. So we need to factor that in, but are they seven times nicer than the cheapest raisins? Probably not. So I think that's probably about it for this video. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you again soon.